This is it. Only two remain. Connor Rhodes, a human being from the planet Earth, has frankly stunned the galaxy. Never before have we witnessed a challenger reach the final race in his first appearance. Some time ago I said that... Just a moment, I understand we have a live feed from... Well, Connor Rhodes, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've wanted. Good luck, because this is Epsilon Indy. Hi everybody, Barlow Lens again. Boy, do we have a great one here for you today. Pilots from across the galaxy are anxious to continue the time trials, but first, let's see how the contestants stack up. The real news, of course, is the appearance of Connor Rhodes, first contestant from the mysterious new planet, Earth. Rhodes is an unknown commodity, but Earthmen in general are reputed to be cunning, resourceful, brave, and often foolhardy. One thing is certain, it should prove to be an exciting first, if not last, race for Mr. Rhodes. Connor Rhodes has made it to the second quadrant. At first, the other challenges appeared to show him little respect, but now they seem anxious to put him in his place. And probably no one would be happier to do just that than the Naotian from Zeta Pupus 111, Dextor the Terrible. Viewers will recall that Dextor won the championship last year following a bizarre incident in which the other contestants became ill at a pre-race buffet. A buffet catered by Dextor. His victory was celebrated on his homeworld of Naos with three days of heavy sarcasm. Good luck, Mr. Rhodes. Connor Rhodes just keeps on coming. No one expected the Earthman to be this good, and around the racing circuit, contestants are beginning to change their minds about Rhodes. And if there is one old pro who knows about change, it would have to be the cryptomorph Engon. Reports indicate that the shapeshifter has been sitting back and analyzing the newcomer's style. No doubt Engon is even now preparing to transform itself into Connor Rhodes' worst nightmare. If so, the question becomes whether or not Connor Rhodes will awaken from this bad dream alive or dead. Newcomer Connor Rhodes continues to hold his own. But before this crowd truly accepts him, he'll have to show that he has what it takes to compete against the circuit favorites. And of course, one of those favorites is five-time champion Gathol Glaherg of Regor 12. Gathol, of course, has been off the circuit for over two years pursuing an acting career. But Earth has a mystical significance for Triceratops sapiens. And it's said Gathol could not pass up an opportunity to race against an opponent from the planet his people call the First World. Let's see just what kind of welcome the Earthman gets. It's safe to say that racing fans were impressed by Connor Rhodes' performance against the drone ship, but now he'll have to go up against a tough customer. Racing fans are no strangers to the formidable half-man, half-machine Coax. A fugitive of war-torn Botan Ghettos, Coax was made a cyborg when the machine civilization he had fought against saved his life. Now, neither man nor machine, he is a bitter, determined contestant. It looks like now we'll really see what Connor Rhodes is made of. Connor Rhodes' amazing march through the preliminaries is now entering its final and most dangerous phase. His challengers now take him very seriously. And no contestant is more serious than Neuron 9. Unlike anything Rhodes has come up against so far, Neuron 9 does not pilot a space vehicle, it is a space vehicle. Noted for precision rather than flair, if Rhodes is hoping it will make a mistake, it is he who may be fatally in error. Well, it's becoming harder and harder to write off newcomer Connor Rhodes as just another pretender. So far, he has fared well against aliens who may be unfamiliar with how he thinks. That is about to change. His next race is against fellow humanoid Tiana Stone. But this may be an advantage for Rhodes as well, unless the stories we've heard are true and Earthmen really have little or no understanding of their planet's women. Hard to believe, but we shall see. Incredibly, newcomer Connor Rhodes has nearly completed the preliminary trials, but blocking his way is one last obstacle. Zack Kilmer. No one is respected more as a racer, no one is hated more as an individual. A product of the officially outlawed hunter culture of the planet Atria, fans universally hold him responsible for last year's deadly collision between Therion Path and the Clicker. Now, however, there are rumors. Rumors that this time he may actually be more interested in winning than in simply orchestrating the deaths of opponents. Good luck, Mr. Rhodes. You'll need it. Hello, everybody. Barlow Lens again. It's been quite a ride so far, but now we're about to embark on a new level of all-out warfare on the rails. The playoffs! Only the top four racers have made it this far. And Connor Rhodes, the challenger from Earth, appearing in the final rounds for the first time. Don't touch that dial, the playoffs are about to begin. Ooh, that was close. You can't be very happy with that one. 
foolish, foolish challengers. Know you know better than to confront me in my own domain? For 40,000 centuries, the people of Neos have mastered every challenge offered to them. Well, everything except for, for bowling and luge. But that is beside the point. Neos is destined to rule this galaxy, and winning the Star Sphere is but a step along that path. Your feeble efforts to thwart the tide of history would merit my pity, were they not so futile. Dextor has spoken. My contact! My contact lands! Nobody move! from Earth, Connor Rhodes, has defeated Dextor the Terrible on his home ground. But then again, who hasn't? Quadrant 7 is coming up right after these important messages. So, Earthman, it has come down to us. I have watched as all of your other challengers have made fools of themselves. Now, it is my turn. Dextor has spoken. Now, be sure to stay tuned as Jody uncovers Scott's secret past in another hilarious episode of... Hey! Oh, tough break, Dextor! I protest. There was a clear violation of the rules. I have been robbed! I demand a reflight. You people think this is the only way you can beat Dextor? You're mistaken. The race was mine. I should be declared the winner! As always, you are gracious in defeat. Thank you. I don't think Dextor is going to be too happy with the outcome this time. Well, it was a good race, Barlow. I guess my best just wasn't good enough out there today. Better luck next time, I always say. Why, Dextor? I can't believe you're being this gracious. If I didn't know better... Engon! Hi, everybody! Another tough defeat for Dextor and the planet Naos. Looks like you're having a run of bad luck, Dextor. Luck? Luck? My fate is not determined by luck or fortune or any of your other primitive concepts. These superstitions of yours are a clear sign of your inferiority. I take full responsibility for everything that happens to me. I am not some pawn of the cosmos. I control my destiny. I am the master of my fate. Ah! Well, Dextor, I'm sure you're already thinking of the little corrections you're going to have to make in order to maintain your title. Well, boys and girls, there you have it. Fine-tuning, the mark of a seasoned pro. Dextor the Terrible and Superior Being from Naos. Attention, Earthling. I give you fair warning. You are now racing against the galaxy's preeminent brain. Retreat now or suffer the ultimate humiliation of defeat at my hands. Dextor has spoken. Is that it? Are we off the air? Just great. Congratulations, Dextor! You did it! You won! Naturally. Anything else would have been unthinkable. One need only look at a statistical comparison of relative brain power to see who the clear winner would be. And yet you overcame the odds anyway! Congratulations! Thank you. Uh, what? No, wait. Dextor, let me be the first to recognize your great victory out there. Did you ever have any doubts? Of course not. I have trained for this race for years. The whole of my mind and body is a single weapon. In a battle of wits, I am fighting unarmed men. But enough of this. There are more races to prepare for. Ah! Well, that's Dextor. Brilliant, determined, and with the cunning and reflexes of a cat. Engon bids you welcome to my home sector. This quadrant is like nothing you have flown before, for nothing is what it appears to be. I warn you to take care. Only I am at home here. For all others, this is a quadrant of death.
challenger from Earth, Connor Rhodes, continues to prove to be unstoppable. Now, however, the competition is about to enter its most challenging phase. We'll be right back after this. The final race at last! You and I alone. Rhodes, I promised you that I would become something you could not face, something you could not beat, and now is the time to make good on that promise. You're mine! Well, Engon, I guess you came up short that time. It was my own fault, really. I should never have tried to go into that turn so fast. I feel like a complete idiot. You're obviously very upset. Well, looks like we've just missed Engon, but I think we all have to agree that he was robbed in that last race. Engon performed brilliantly, and if it weren't for the blatant fouls committed by the competition... Um, this has been, a uh, Barlow Lens reporting. Now back to the race! Oh, tough break, Engon! I'm so embarrassed! I... I... Now, now, it's not that bad. We all have off days. Please, w won't you please come back? Well, folks, I'm afraid Engon has turned himself into a chair once again following that last defeat. I wish he'd come out. Barlow! At last I can regale you with a few stories from my military career under good King Halurg. <laughs> what was that? Anyway, as I was saying, this is one of my longer stories. <laughs> Engon, the unpredictable shapeshifter from parts unknown. So, you have made it to the playoffs, young Connor. You have impressed me with your intensity and skill in your races against the other challengers. But I am your worst nightmare, Rhodes. I will become something you cannot face. Engon, a great race. How do you feel? Oh, uh, you know, nothing special. All in a day's work. Once again, Engon's trademark modesty. Yes! Congratulations, Engon! I don't think I've ever seen flying like that. Thank you, Barlow. I think that the secret is in remaining cool, maintaining your composure, and not letting it go to your head. So very true. So very true. Well, there you have it. Self-control, Engon's secret to success. Excuse me. Well, I've seen a lot of amazing races in my time, but Connor Rhodes has left us all speechless. He's won the Star Sphere, and he's won the hearts of racing fans everywhere. Still, in closing, I can't help but wonder what drives Rhodes, or any railer for that matter. These giant tracks were obviously not built for our amusement, and the Star Sphere must be more than just a trophy. But, without that missing piece, this whole adventure will forever be as much a mystery to Connor Rhodes as it is to us. Perhaps that's just as well. Good night, Galaxy, from all of us here at Epsilon Indy! Repeating our top story... Today's champion, Connor Rhodes, has unexpectedly left the area at an extremely high rate of speed. He appears to be heading directly back towards his own solar system as fast as he can. Roads going. My God, 
He's actually flying through the asteroid belt. What's that ahead of him? What is he following? It's a rail! I it's a rail! Earth's asteroid belt is the missing rail! Connor's speed is beyond belief! If he can just hold on a few more seconds, he's almost reached the end of the rail! No trace of Connor Rhodes, his ship, or the Star Sphere was ever found. There was no possibility of reconstructing the rail to find out what happened. Why the builders of the rail should have gone to all this trouble to kill a single man would forever be a mystery. But there are some who say that Connor Rhodes found out that in that last moment before impact, Connor Rhodes discovered the secret of the rails. With the arrival of the newcomer from the Milky Way galaxy, the simple elimination round can begin. Gentlemen, start your engines! Greetings, friends, greetings! In the domain of Gathol Glaherg, all are welcome. It is a fine day for living, and any day worth living is a day worth raising, eh? But while in my domain, why not stop and visit Gathol's all-you-can-eat steakhouse, just off Route 6 on Rego 12. There you'll enjoy one of my famous rib dinners, but please, as always, no tyrannosaurs. continues to show great promise as he hands Gathol Glaherg his head in his own quadrant. Soon the railers will move on to quadrant five, but first, this important message. The final rail has come. Here, one of us shall drink deep from victory's cup. For the other, well, is not the star sphere the one thing worth losing everything for? Oh, tough break, Gathol. A marvelous flight. I haven't had so much fun in years. I tell you, sometimes I feel like a pup again. But you lost. Did I? Still one of the best races I've had. Did you see us come around that final curve? Fantastic! Well, I imagine Gathol isn't too happy with that performance. Ah, my boy. If I was on top all of the time, I'd be bored. But did you see the style of that lad, Connor Rhodes? By the stars, it's good to have new blood in this race. Well, what about your style? Planning any changes for the next race? What? Improve on me? Why, that'd be like polishing the sun, lad. <laughs>
Well, I guess it's better luck next time, Gathol. Well, you know, Barlow, they say it is better to be good than lucky. That way, when luck comes along, you'll be ready for it. That's sound advice for the youngsters out there, Gathol. That's right. And kids, you can join the Gathol Glaherg fan club by sending a self-addressed stamped envelope to Gamma Valorum 12, P.O. Box 36785498343862125. Well, Gathol, I guess no one likes to lose. Or hates to win. Triumph and disaster are two imposters to be treated just the same. The glory is not in the finishing, but in the doing, Barlow. That's very inspiring. And next time, I'm going to blow the doors off that Earthman if it's the last thing I do. But if you'll excuse me, I'm throwing a post-race party. Gathol Glaherg, the seemingly unstoppable five-time champion from Regor 12. I'm glad to see you made it this far, Rhodes. Now we shall see if the prophecy of Vortul comes to pass. Only a man risen from the dust of the first world shall ever defeat me on the rails. Strap yourself in tight and don't blink. It is time to live the legend. Congratulations on a great race, Gathol. My victory was foretold by the Seven Rivers of Vortul. Nothing shall stand between me and a glorious victory for Regor 12 and our beloved High Appraiser of Darkness. Um, yes, well, I'm sure it was a great moment for your family, too. Hmm? What? Oh, oh, yes. Hi, Mom! Just amazing, Gathol! You simply blew away the competition that time! It is a day for legends! Let the scribes of Astronax polish the sacred tablets and carve upon them my name! No rider is my equal this day! I feel too powerful to race mere mortals! Bring me giants! No! No! Sorry. Enough of these children's games. You have been impressive so far, Earther, but a real veteran knows the difference between skill and luck. I think you have precious little of either. We shall see. The true tournament begins here, now, in my domain. You shall either learn to respect me, Rhodes, or you shall learn the taste of death. Welcome to the rails, Earthman. Challenger from Earth, Connor Rhodes, has scored an impressive victory over Coax in his home domain. Now it's on to Quadrant 4, but first, these messages. Stop kidding yourself, Rhodes. Why drag this out? Surrender now and you can return to your feeble little world a hero. There is no disgrace in losing this race. At least, not for an Earthman. A tough defeat, Coax. You've got to be disappointed in that one. There will be other days, Barlow. I have some special equipment coming in from the parts planets of Tau City. Oh, really? Would that be for you or your ship? Well, uh, back to the race. Coax, can we have a word? When did you know it was over? The ion feeder nozzle jammed open. I lost all control of the dorsal thrust mount just as I was about to break into the lead. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was... Sabotage? That's hard to believe. No living thing can withstand the radiation near an ion nozzle and survive. Yes, no living thing. Then, are you accusing Neuron 9? Coax? Uh, Coax? Tell me, Coax, how does it feel to have lost in this very important race? Oh, you have to learn not to take the individual races too seriously, Barlow. But surely you must be disappointed- You either learn to take these things in stride, or you let them eat you up. Losing any one individual race is, is meaningless! Uh, well, thanks, Coax. I think that's an important lesson for the kids out there to keep in mind. Things just don't seem to be going your way out here today, Coax. Don't be too sure. Sometimes it is better to give your opponent a false sense of security in the more important races ahead. Well, then let me congratulate you on a clever tactical retreat, Coax. Thank you. 
Coax, the determined, remorseless cyborg from Button Katos. You think you can't be beaten, Rhodes? You think it's all but over? It's not over. It's only begun. They may have made me a machine, but there is still enough of me in here for you to hate. A brilliant race, Coax! Just brilliant! How did you do it? I was a fool! The Earthman should never have come that close. I will not let it happen again! But you won! Never again, Rhodes! Never! Well, that's it from a somewhat disappointed winner! Coax, another impressive victory! Tell me, did you ever have any doubts? Yes. Uh, Coax, wait! Uh, well, Coax is a, a man, I guess, of few words. I think the only victory he's really interested in is the one at Epsilon Indy's final rail. So, let's get on to the next race! Fools believe that, as a machine, I am only capable of learning by trial and error. Well, Connor Rhodes, this is your trial, and I will learn from your errors. Every mistake you commit makes me stronger. In fact, since I began talking, I have already defeated you in 87 million simulated races. I have calculated your odds, Rhodes. You have none. Challenger from Earth, Connor Rhodes, has defeated all but one opponent in his home domain. That final deadly competition is coming up after this. Stay tuned. I have waited seven and a half million years to possess the Star Sphere, Connor Rhodes. I will not be denied the championship by a carbon-based, emotion-controlled, experienced, enslaved, five-pound chemical computer. Try to defeat me now, and I predict a 99.78% probability that you will never cross the finish line alive. Tough break, Neuron 9. I think most of us thought you'd pull that one out. I calculate a 98.32% probability that you are lying, Barlow. Just trying to be nice, Mr. 9. Don't be foolish. As a machine, I experience only the emotions I choose. Okay, well, another embarrassing defeat for the always overconfident number cruncher, Neuron 9. If he weren't immortal, they'd be writing his obituary. Okay, okay. Well, Neuron 9, looks like it just wasn't your day. I shall function to fly again, Barlow. No question about that, but tell me, what's the worst part about being a seven and a half million year old immortal? Well, I guess it would have to be the fact that I still get ID'd almost everywhere I go. That really frosts me. Neuron 9, I must admit you didn't seem to give that last race your all. I am incapable of performing at anything but my optimum level. Unlike biomorphs, I am not subject to variances in my skills as the result of mood, health, or concentration. While that may be true, don't you now find yourself in a situation where your ability to calculate the predicted performance of your opponents must of necessity rely to some degree upon your own admittedly incomplete evaluations of their skills to this point? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Neuron 9, it's really gotta be hard to lose a race like that. Yes, but I have made certain improvements to my operating systems and I am now extremely confident that these changes will shave off those few remaining errors in judgment. Well, there you have it! Neuron 9's Pursuit of Perfection! Neuron 9, the ancient all-knowing spaceship! Although I naturally predicted that you would make it to the playoffs, Connor Rhodes, I am gratified to get another chance to show you the superiority of the machine mind. I will know your every move before you make it and I will capitalize on every weakness you show. As a machine, I only feel emotions which are useful to me, but somehow, I almost feel sorry for you. Congratulations, what a race! I think you impressed the fans that time! Thank you. Naturally, there are so many variables in any one race that the outcome is always in some doubt. However, once again, I think that this simply proves the superiority of machine intelligence over biochemical consciousness. The advantages of being a machine far outweigh any problems. 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 Uh, thank you! Now back to the race! Another impressive victory, Neuron 9! Come on now, you've got to be excited! As you know, Barlow, I am over seven and a half million years old. There is very little that I haven't seen or done. Except, of course, winning the Star Sphere at Epsilon Indy! Yes, except that. Naturally, I intend to keep trying. 
that's great. There you have it, folks. Neuron 9, still hanging in there at an age when most of us would be thinking about retiring. Challenger from Earth, Cutter Rhodes, is one step away from winning it all. Only a single race stands between him and total victory. Our next stop, Epsilon Indy. One hundred and seventeen million years ago, something went to work in the galaxy. Something began building the rails. Thousands of miles long, each is as different as the civilization for which it seems to have been built. Their purpose is unclear. What is known is that the nearer a ship ventures to a rail, the faster it goes. With no other use for the huge structures, the rails were transformed into mammoth race tracks. Upon these tracks, the 43 known civilizations of the galaxy competed for the right to be called champion. The prize they fought for was the Star Sphere. Assembled from 43 stones, each one found embedded in a different rail. These gems formed a nearly perfect globe, with one missing piece. Then, five centuries ago, a 44th rail was discovered. Adrift and orbiting a dying star, it contained no gem with which to complete the star sphere. Still, it is for the right to compete at this final lifeless sun that the galaxy's great champions will go to war. For this is the most challenging rail of all. This is rail number 44, the rail at Epsilon Indy. Challenger from Earth, Cutter Rhodes, has passed his first test and has earned the right to move on to the final elimination round before the true race begins. Congratulations, Mr. Rhodes, but you still have a long, long way to go before you reach Epsilon Indy. Challenger from Earth, Cutter Rhodes, has earned the right to join the battle to reach Epsilon Indy. Over the next seven quadrants, we'll see what this Earthman is truly made of. Take a deep breath, Mr. Rhodes. You're about to dive into the fiercest battle of the galaxy.
Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to welcome you to the Quadrant. Okay, so you're welcome. They say there's some legend about these rails, but come on, who really cares? Look, we're here to race, so let's all forget this mystical garbage, do our jobs, and get on with it. And, oh yeah, you're gonna lose. Challenger from Earth, Connor Rhodes, has shown he's not to be taken lightly. His victory in Quadrant 5 is nothing short of stunning. Will he do as well in Quadrant 6? Only time can tell. So, we're finally alone at last. I swore I'd crush anyone who got in my way. Uh, too bad it has to be you. But that's the way space-time collapses, Connor. Tiana, that was close. You can't be very happy with that one. I'm never very happy. Oh, we'll be right back! Oh, tough break, Diana. From here, it looked like you went a little easy on the newcomer. Care to explain? What are you talking about? Connor Rhodes is just another stepping stone. If he thinks I gave him a break, so what? Then he owes me one. Well, well. Sounds like Cathol may have some new competition both on and off the track. Now, back to the race! Well, I guess as our great philosopher, Bryler the Self-Apparent, once said to the people of Apocalypse 7 following their war with Fargon the Insane, losing just never gets any easier, eh, Tiana? Oh, shut up! And as we all know, that's exactly what the people of Apocalypse 7 said to Bryler the Self-Apparent just before they barbecued him. Well, Tiana, you gave it your best shot. I should have rammed them both into that iron asteroid and smashed them to atoms. I'm just too much of a lady for this game. Uh, yes, well, uh, I think that uh, goes without saying. Back to the race! Tiana Stone, the no-nonsense, hard-as-nails professional from Alpha Canis Majoris Three. Well, well, look who made it this far. I'm glad to get my chance with you, Rhodes. Now we'll see if you're a real racer or just another shooting star. And don't count on me for any more help. I'm fresh out of favors for inexperienced boys. A great race, Tiana! How did you do it? Ah, this is nothing. Try flying a Stygian Lancer deep into franchise Cathabian territory sometime. Those boys play for keeps. This is just a game. And what a game it is when Tiana wins like that! Tiana, congratulations! You really seem to be putting your all into these rails. Hey, that's the only way, isn't it? I came here to win, not to sign autographs and get my face on TV. Well, I'm sure your opponents are giving it their all, too. You could fool me. What's the matter, boys? Getting too hot for you out there? I know how happy you all are to return here, but what's past is past. Therion and the Clicker are dead. They were careless. As for the newcomer, I always welcome fresh games. But I warn you, Earthling, I have discovered the secret of these rails, and nothing will stop me from winning the Star Sphere now that I know its power. Connor Rhodes has done it! He has emerged victorious in each of the domains of his challengers. Now, all that stands between him and Epsilon Indy is Quadrant 10 and the playoffs. Excellent. Now it's just the two of us. You have made this an intriguing hunt, Terran. But all good things must come to an end. Only I can decipher the Star Sphere and read its meaning. I must have it, and you must die. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Zack Kilmer came oh so close that time. What went wrong, Zack? It was my own fault. I attempted to ram the leader into an asteroid, but he pulled away at the last moment. But you would have killed him! I know. It's very disappointing. Disappointment seems to be dogging Zack Kilmer now. Are there any changes you'll make based on this performance, Zack? Well, if I'd flown through that observation platform, I could have cut a few seconds off my time, but it really wouldn't have changed the outcome. But you would have killed hundreds of innocent spectators! Aren't the lives of sentient beings more important than a slight improvement in a losing performance? Hmm. Can I get back to you on that? Ooh, Zack Kilmer can't feel too good about that performance! How about it, Zack? Angry? Seething with a desire to mercilessly destroy the first person who annoys me, Barlow. Well then, let me ask you this! We'll be right back. Zack, I guess it's never easy to lose an important race like this. Tell me, how do you pick up the pieces and keep mentally prepared for the next race? Kill. Yes, sir! Ten, nine, eight, Well, seven, there you have it! Six, Delegating five, responsibility! Five, the key three, to success! Two, now back to the race! Zack Kilmer, the ruthless Thanatan representative of the predatory planet Atria. So, it seems you have some new tricks up your sleeve, eh, newcomer? You'll need more than tricks now. The Star Sphere will show me the way to the greatest prize in the galaxy. Obstruct me, and be reduced to your component atoms. An impressive victory, Zack! The competition, as usual, lost due to its own cowardice. Frankly, I'd expected more from the Challenger from Earth, but he seems to be fitting in well with my other opponents. They all put such a high value on their worthless lives. Well, I'm sure you mean that in only the most positive way. That's it from here. Tell me, Zack, if you go on to the final rail at Epsilon Indy and win it all, what will be your plans then? Once the Star Sphere is mine, you will see. For 200 years, fools have won it and not known what they have. I don't understand. What do you think it is? It's the key. The key to all of this. And soon, it will be mine. 